Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. This is our third segment, and we're going to go deep into what is now being called the one of the, I think, the biggest vaccine controversy in the nation at this time. And that is the vaccine bill SB277, which is mandating that every parent get their child vaccinated in the state of California. The governor just signed it. And I want to go over something that the governor said a few years ago. This is back in September 6, 2011. I am returning the Senate Bill 105 without my signature. The measure would impose criminal penalties on a child under the age of 18 if his parents uh, and the child of skis or snowboards did this without a helmet. While I appreciate the value of wearing a ski helmet, I am concerned about the continuing and seemingly in inexorable transfer of authority from parent to the state. Not every human problem deserves a law. I believe parents have the ability and responsibility to make good choices for their children. Okay? Now, that is on for skiing, which you could go look up the stats. People die from skiing. People um, get maimed really bad when they don't wear helmets. It's a pretty smart thing to do. You could also look up the stats on bicycles. About six children a year die from bicycles. Now, this whole SB277 started with this crazy measles outbreak that happened in Disneyland that was definitely transferred by workers who had already been vaccinated. And it came from a country that has a 98% vaccination rate. And they consider, uh, them, to, they consider them to be vaccine or measles free in that area. And I think it was uh, the Philippines where it, it originated from. Now let's look at the money that was poured in for SB277. Two million donated to lawmakers in 2013, 2014. Uh, opponents of the SB277 link supporters to pharmaceutical donations. And you can look at the donations here. Over $2 million, Johnson & Johnson, GlaxoSmithKline, Eli Lilly. Those are your main vaccine makers. Merck is also in there. Bristol-Myers, Pfizer. And uh, the top senator there, Richard Pan, 95000 in donations. How do you think he's going to vote? Think he's going to vote yes? Yeah, of course he's going to vote yes. These people are paid off, especially in California, because they need so much money to live because that, that state has turned into a giant welfare state. Meanwhile, while the gov governor, Jerry Brown, is, is signing this law, he's got a, a, an amazing, they estimate $59 billion to fix the now crumbling roads. So I don't know how he's going to fix these roads. He should be worrying about the damn roads, not making sure kids are vaccinated against their parents' consent, which seems to be what he is concerned about. Now, all this vaccine media uproar has caused Jim Carrey to actually speak out on Twitter. But of course, he was attacked. And he's not even against vaccination. He's just saying, why do we have toxins in vaccines? And I'll get to that in a second. But the, the, hit, dogs, the hit dogs came out on him. You look at Salon.com. Jim Carrey leads California's paranoid anti-vax freakout. This corporate fascist must be stopped. Uh, here we are in Salon, carried away. Uh, <laughs> just everybody's attacking Jim Carrey. Here's the Daily Beast. Jim Carrey's descent into madness. Okay, here's a shot of him in a beard looking crazy because he asked a few simple questions. Let's look at some of his tweets. He even says, I'm pro-vaccine, anti-neurotoxin. Governor, California governor says yes to poisoning more children with mercury and aluminum and mandatory vaccines. This corporate fascist must be stopped. <laughs> they say mercury in fish is dangerous, but forcing all our children to be injected with mercury and thimerosal is no risk. Makes sense? I am not anti-vaccine. I'm anti-thimerosal, anti-mercury. Okay, the CDC can't solve a problem they helped start. It's too risky to admit they've been wrong about mercury and thimerosal. They are corrupt. Okay, these are just normal tweets from a guy who doesn't think mercury should be injected into small babies or aluminum or the other toxins that are in there. There's a lot more. You should actually read the damn insert to find out. And now I want you to watch this video testimonial. This is from a lady named Landy Cryer. And she had, she vaccinated her first two children and they had adverse reactions. They had asthma, anaphylactic shock, which means you stop breathing and uh, shingles in the eye. So she decided not to vaccinate her third child, which is her choice to do as a parent. Informed consent. This is what the governor of California has taken away. And this is going to be a springboard and it's going to come to every state out there in the United States. They're going to force this vaccination program on you. And then they're going to bring in more vaccines. They're going to say, oh, you need a vaccine against, uh, tetter or psoriasis, whatever. They're going to come up with something that you need a vaccine for. Oh, you don't like what the government says? We got a vaccine for that. So watch what this mother says. And this is what they're going to take away from you out there. Be warned. 
Hi, I'm Landy. I have three children who reacted to vaccines, and I'd like to share why I'm opposed to mandatory vaccination. Uh, my oldest, um, my, my first two children were both fully vaccinated. My boy wheezed after, two, after his two month shots, and um, I asked the pediatrician, could the, could the vaccines make him wheeze? And, you know, she kind of looked at me like I had eight heads. She just denied that, that it could have anything to do with the vaccines. And so we, we continued to vaccinate him. And by the time he was 18 months, he had full blown asthma and had a childhood full of hospitalizations, ICU, and a lot of respiratory problems. And it wasn't until I stopped vaccinating my older two children that they immediately got healthier. I took them to a holistic practitioner and we got them off all the antibiotics and, and, and the vaccines and their health improved immensely. So with my third child, I was not vaccinating because I had concerns about the asthma and I really truly felt that, and I had done some research and saw that asthma was actually listed as a adverse side effect of, of vaccines. So I was concerned about that. So I didn't vaccinate the younger, my, my third child. But he had a, a bad accident. He cut his cheek on a metal scooter. And so when I took him to the ER, he had to get a lot of stitches. And they convinced me that he needed to take, because of tetanus, fear of tetanus, because he was cut by metal, he needed to have the DTAP shot, which was only given in DTAP. I couldn't get it separate. Like, I couldn't just get a tetanus shot. So he, I went ahead and caved, and they gave him the shot. And within seven days, he had a really large uh, lump on his arm at the injection site. And it was very hot. And um, he said his arm hurt. He couldn't raise his arm. So I called the pediatrician, and she just told me that he was having an, a localized reaction to the vaccine and to put ice on it and watch him. And within eight to 10 hours of that, he started um, crying, and he had hives over his entire body, was covered in hives. He started saying he couldn't breathe, and it was very scary, so we took him to the emergency room. And by the time we got there, they said his throat was closing, and they gave him a shot of steroids and did a bunch of things to open up his airway. And he continued to have to be on um, oral and topical um, Benadryl as well as steroids for 10 days, continued to break out in hives for a full 10 days. And it was basically an allergic reaction to something in the DTAP shot. And after that, I really st started researching more about vaccines and found out all the adverse side effects that they can have. And I realized that a lot of these problems my children had had were actually a result of the vaccines. And my daughter, when she was a teenager, developed shingles in her eye. And the eye doctor asked us, has she had the chicken pox? And I said, no, you know, but she had the vaccine. So basically by her getting the vaccine for the chicken pox, it caused her to get shingles in her eye. And she's had two or three more episodes of that uh, as a result of having that vaccine as well. And I'm very opposed to mandatory vaccination because I am concerned that with my youngest, he had the anaphylactic reaction to the vaccine. So I would probably be able to get a medical exemption for that one vaccine, but I would, he would not qualify for an exemption on the other vaccines. And there's so many now. And my concern is that there's the same ingredients or some of the same ingredients which could have caused his reaction. And I don't want to play Russian roulette with, his, with him again. And I don't want to put him through that. It was very traumatic and very scary for everyone involved. So while I was vaccinating my older two children, you know, I noticed that their immune systems were weaker. They were getting sick a lot. They were sick all the time with different things. Um, I didn't vaccinate my third child, and he was never sick. He never had ear infections. So I, I kind of realized that the immune system left untouched was a lot stronger and the symptoms and things when he would get a cold were a lot less severe than when the older two, which I had on the vaccine schedule, they tended to um, be sick more frequently. Um, so with all of them, I, I kind of figured out that just building the immune system is the way to uh, beat illness and not necessarily does it have to come from a vaccine. And I feel I'm not too concerned about my kids getting whooping cough or the measles because I know that if I keep their immune system strong, 
that they'll be able to overcome that. And I won't have to be concerned about major side effects because they have a strong immune system. And with enough vitamin A and enough vitamin C and you know, taking them to a holistic doctor, I feel like that, that they would be able to recover and be stronger and be granted the, the, life, the gift of lifelong immunity from if they did get those diseases.